Hey guys, my name is Ravish and I'm back again with another video in the series of DevOps interviews. Now in today's interview, I'm going to ask a few questions related to CICD. I'm going to ask his roles and responsibilities in this project and a few questions on Kubernetes, AWS and around cloud with Sonar Cube and stuff. So uh, these are the questions that I'm going to ask. So this is another excerpt, not a full interview, another excerpt and in these we'll discuss about the questions and a few things over here all right so uh, again i would like to request that if you're new over here kindly subscribe my channel logic ops lab because it motivates me to create more content like this all right so without further ado let's get started okay and like uh, can you explain me your project and your role in it we are working for us customer william sonoma this customer is basically on prem we help this customer in migrating application to cloud gcp google cloud we have used so we migrated them and we manage their environments like there are different different development teams for which we help them in migrating to kubernetes so we help development team the legacy application migration to Kubernetes on Google Cloud. That is my goal. Okay, okay. Um, so, like, what are your day day to day responsibilities? So we are working Sprint model. We have Sprint for two weeks, and Jira stories are assigned, and we work on the Sprint. Like any application team which they wants to come to our platform. One person from our team will work with them, and all their end-to-end requirements we need to take care. Of. <laughs> like implementing Kubernetes pipeline, Jenkins pipeline, setting up pipeline, writing deployment YAML files, and different teams will have different requirements. Like some will say Vault, some console, MongoDB, Redis. So every team will have their own requirement which we need to implement in CI/CD. And give the solution back to them. Okay, so uh, let's say uh, there is a developer in your team. Okay. Okay. And uh, uh, first of all, what is your background? Java background or uh, C sharp background? Our applications are Java applications. Okay. So Java microservices. Yeah. Okay. So let's say uh, your developers are writing code in Java and they have created. Okay. An application, web-based application. Okay. Okay. So now they are just putting their code into GitHub. That's all they are doing. And you are the only DevOps engineer. So I want you to create a pipeline in such a way that it goes till production. Okay. Okay. So you have to just uh, tell me the number of steps that you'll use and what are the steps and what are the tools that you'll use. Build. So GitHub version control. We need to do build activity for build. We have to use Maven for building artifact, create jar files, war files, and then create Docker image using Docker file, push it to Artifactory, and then use Jenkins for deploying them to Kubernetes cluster. So Maven, Sonarchy, Jenkins, we use primary. No, I I want you to walk me through the whole life cycle. What you what are the steps that you will create and how you will create them. Okay, so initially, build and deployment process will start from code commit. Developer will commit their code in GitHub. The moment someone commits to GitHub, webhook is triggered. That webhook will call Jenkins job. Jenkins will download the code, invoke Maven code. Maven will compile the code, create artifacts, bar, jar, files, push it to Artifactory. After that, we have another job that will be called that will create Docker image. And this Docker image is pushed to Docker registry. And then deployment artifact will come. Deployment job will take the image, latest image, and deploy it to Kubernetes cluster. So Jenkins will do deployments. Build and deployment whole process is done from Jenkins. Okay, so how the code is getting pushed to Artifactory? Artifactory code is 
compiled and pushed jar files so from plugin from the maven we define artifactory urls and all and once code is built push to artifactory jfrog artifactory from the jenkins job okay but uh, how does your artifactory knows that uh, an artifact is getting transferred like it might not know jenkins will push that using curl commands and all artifact is built copied in the jenkins workspace and that is copied to jfrog artifactory from our automation using curl command in the version okay so uh, you are creating pipelines for that or like writing yes pipeline okay so what kind of pipeline declare it to pipeline okay we have jenkins file <laughs> yes yes so uh, can you just walk me through the number uh, all these steps that are used to push that artifact into the repo, uh, artifactory artifact we have to have the jenkins file inside jenkins file we should have the artifact that we have created and the declare it to pipeline syntax we need to define right like what is the uh, job that we are executing like what we need to do and then the server id server url what is the credentials right and then we need to have the file like in the spec files and then we give the pattern like in the workspace like uh, inside this job slash uh, this slash target like that we have we specify pattern and target we specify and then the project where we need to speak it's a jenkins file declare it to file we need to specify okay initially okay okay so this jfrog is like paid or a uh, free software no it's it's uh, we are using the enterprise product paid one okay we okay. have support also okay. enterprise product for jfrog okay so uh, what are you guys using for uh, testing in this application selenium we have qa automation testing using selenium okay okay so uh, like who is writing these test cases qa automation qa and how are you integrating it with your pipeline jenkins we have selenium grid cluster that we have set up and browserless the selenium artifacts are downloaded and then executed on a selenium slave node in jenkins okay when you say slave uh, how do you create a market uh, not market a uh, master slave architecture in jenkins master slave we have to download the slave dot jar and then copy the slave dot jar in the slave machine execute it and establish the connection using jnlp protocol in the manage jenkins manage nodes you can see what are the uh, slave nodes you can give a slave node click on okay and then you decide like how do you want to connect using ssh you can connect to the destination system and then you can have this jnlp dot jar file that you need to execute in the client system in the slave machine okay 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 mm, okay um how good are you in uh, docker and kubernetes i'm good in kubernetes okay so what is the underlying problem that is uh, kubernetes has solved or is trying to resolve kubernetes is for orchestration of your containers so containers started because vms are heavy and docker is lightweight so we don't need to have the whole vm image inside the container only the dependencies and needed softwares are packaged it takes less memory so docker is solving the problem of vm like vm is heavy docker is lightweight kubernetes manages the containers for effectively it's an orchestration engine okay so how are this kubernetes and docker related uh, is there any relation kubernetes yes kubernetes backend is docker kubernetes runtime is docker okay okay so what is the main uh, have you ever worked on docker swarm or something heard about no it? no okay no. okay okay and what are the main components of kubernetes architecture master worker node hcd schedulers kubelet 
you proxy okay great uh, how do you explain uh, a node in kubernetes node is nothing but the worker node where our pods will be deployed okay and that's it okay so is it a single machine or or it's a form of cluster it's a cluster meaning we have one kubernetes cluster which will have multiple worker nodes inside it okay okay great uh, so uh, uh, what is this node contain what does it have kubelet and kube proxy and the vm image okay 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 and uh, you were talking about pod right so what exactly is this pod in kubernetes pod contains containers containers contain business logic okay so uh, have you heard about this cube scheduler the cube scheduler schedules the pods to be deployed on nodes okay okay uh, have you heard about daemon sets yes splunk agent some software you want to run in all worker node we use daemon set for that okay okay uh okay i'll give you a, a scenario based question okay okay are you comfortable in aws i'm comfortable okay i can answer questions okay. i have used aws and gcp both okay okay so uh, where are you sitting right now like what place in my room no no like physical location hyderabad hyderabad okay so uh, let's say there is a server uh, ec2 server which is in hyderabad okay okay and you are running that same application which you are working on in uh, hyderabad only in that vm only okay uh, i want you to block people from bangalore and not access that application everyone else should access how will you block me okay 